So I've got a Kubota B2620. It has 350 uh, hours on it, give or take. And I have the LA364 front end loader on here. And I was doing some work on my property and the uh, controller for the bucket dump uh, curl suddenly kind of went loose, you know, so the symptom was like the this, you know, controller was just the joystick was just flopping around, right? So I did some troubleshooting and discovered that this gizmo here was broken. So here's the other part. Here's the bolt broke, right? So I'll show you just for uh, reference, like actually what happened. So the way this thing works is this block is mounted. This block here is mounted in that, like this is the where the joystick actually attaches to. And then these things, uh, this guy is called the link uh, link ball. You know, so it's like a ball bearing uh, that's mounted on this uh, rod, I guess you would call it. And, you know, so it takes this uh, rotational motion of this block, which, which is mounted into this kind of yoke, yoke assembly. I don't know what else you would call it. It's kind of yoke assembly that's in there. And then these uh, link balls, you can see one in here. I don't know if the lighting is going to cooperate for me. Maybe you can see it, maybe not. Um, anyway, it converts that uh, kind of rotational motion into a linear motion to pull and push on the um, hydraulic valve that's in there. The set of hydraulic valves that's in there in that controller thing. So anyway, I just got to replace that. I thought it'd be good to record this and put it on YouTube because I couldn't find any refer references for it. And you can really see like why this broke very easily. Um, my guess is it probably came loose at some point. It may be somebody tightened the bejesus out of it. And it, it, over time it just kind of fatigued like where it, like right where it kind of goes into the threads. So there's actually a little gap in there between the threads and the, uh, this block. So it's able to move just a tiny bit. So probably over time it just fatigues from use. You know, it's only 354 hours on this tractor. So, you know, and I doubt anybody's been really yanking on that thing like a gorilla. There's not really much resistance there, right? So one of the trickiest aspects of this was finding the replacement. Because I think THK changed this part number system. So... Like these things look a little bit different, but that's the closest one I could find online. So hopefully it's gonna work out for me. They look very similar. So I gotta get this out, put it in there and replace it. All right, this I think is, uh, yeah, maybe they're different. Yeah, they're the same. <laughs> we'll find out. So I'll record this process as I go along. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually mark the orientation of this piece with respect to the rest of this body. So this is a, so the part number they have listed on here is BL8S8-1. And then this thing is BL8S12-2. <laughs> but this is the closest thing I could find on their website, you know, so, and they, they even had a different kind of name for this thing. So, I don't know. I think it's going to work though. We'll find out. So here you can see I just marked the orientation of this. Uh, I don't know what they call this part, but this thing, <laughs> I marked it with respect to where these lines are, you know, the on the link ball. So I don't know if that's going to show up, but you can see I just marked it with a Sharpie. So next thing I'm going to get this out of here. Okay, so this was like extremely easy to get out. It was just finger tight in there. 
So you can see it's not quite lined up to where I had it before. So I'm gonna have to tweak that around a little bit, maybe I tighten it up with a wrench. Now these are, I think they're just zinc, cast zinc. So they're probably pretty wimpy. Um, and I probably could have like literally taken that out of there with my fingers. It was that kind of, it wasn't really cranked down at all. So I guess it doesn't need to be super tight because this is basically locked in place. It has nowhere to go. You know, it's not gonna vibrate apart or anything. So anyway, I'll uh, get this lined up and then I'll continue on with the video. Yeah, sorry about the wind noise and the traffic noise. I'm just out in my driveway here, not in a studio or anything. But yeah, it's pretty easy to get it lined up. I just played with the lock nut and, you know, it's just threaded right in there. And it's not, you know, I'm not going to use Loctite or anything on it. There was no Loctite on it to begin with. Um, and I've lined it up. So I'm not sure about the overall length. I think it's like ex pretty close to what it was. But um, yeah, we'll go from there and adjust it if need be. So we're good to go, I think. So now, all we gotta do is screw this in here. And this, I'm actually gonna put Loctite on there because I suspect what happened was this came loose and then somebody tightened this like way down. And actually you can see there's like a gall mark here. So it's probably over torqued and it broke that thread. So it was just a matter of time before that broke. So I can see when this would get loose, it would just be flopping around in there probably. And you would lose, it wouldn't, uh, you, I think there would be a lot of play in the uh, control uh, in the joystick. And then somebody just cranked this mofo down there. So let's try Loctite and just not tighten it up all that much. So then this is where the rest of the assembly sort, sort of comes into play too. Um, so this is the top. That's where the joystick bolts on. This guy's going to go in like that. And then there's another, uh, then this threads into that yoke thing. Now I'll show that part when I'm on, onto it. But I think this part is actually sort of interesting to think about. There's no grease in here that I could tell. And I'm guessing this is some sort of molybdenum disulfide uh, bushing, right? So I'm not gonna grease it either, but I am gonna clean this thing up a little bit. And I guess I'll just leave that alone and I'll clean this up with a wire brush just real quickly, because why not, you know? Hopefully I won't have to take it apart for another, you know, five years or something. So this tractor is a used tractor. I bought it, I'm the second owner, and I've put about, you know, 20 hours on it so far. So I'm kind of surprised this thing broke after only 300 hours of use, but maybe the previous owner was like a, a real gorilla with it. So <laughs> I'll assemble this and tr start getting it in the tractor and I'll, I'll film that part. All right, so once I was cleaning this thing off, I could actually tell it had been greased. The grease was, you know, very old, but it was still present. So I greased it up, did a pretty light, you know, little amount of grease on there. I'll probably even wipe some of it off as I go to try to assemble it. I don't know if I can, I can't see it. There's very, it's very glary, glary out today. <laughs> but there you can see it's greased. And we'll reassemble it. It's pretty simple. So I did use some Loctite on this thing, and... Yeah, it spins freely. The ball, the link ball spins freely. So you just have to snug this thing down. Now, what I'm suspecting, like I said previously, is somebody cranked this mofo in here. Maybe it's cracking already, but they probably killed it eventually. So they really over torqued it and uh, maybe fatigued, the, fatigued that little nut in there or the uh, bolt in there prematurely. So I just snugged it down. I don't think it really needs to be overly tight. So now I'm going to stick it back in the tractor. I'll film that too. Okay, so the way that I got this out is maybe not the way that you would do it if you were a Kubota technician trained by the Kubota people, <laughs> but it worked for me. So I was able to just get the cowling or whatever you call this cover, this plastic cover out of the way enough to work this into place. And in order to do so, and to do the minimum number of removals of stuff possible, I had to remove the uh, link ball for the up-down control of the uh, front-end loader. So that's very simple. These are 14s. You need, uh, actually maybe they're 13s, I don't remember now. But you need a couple wrenches. You need to hold that guy and loosen that guy. 
So I'm, I can't do that while I, I'm holding the camera, so I'll return after that's done. So I got that bolt off the link ball that is for the up-down control on the bucket. So now that thing is loose. So now this control, this yoke, I don't know what you call it, um, it's free to turn. And you need it to be free from that because it will interfere uh, when you go to put the bolt, when you go to put this bolt in that connects that block into the yoke arm, it will be in the way of this, uh, this uh, bolt that's welded onto this plate here uh, that holds the seat down will be in the way if you try to reassemble it. So it's pretty easy though. So here we go. I'll just put that back in here. It's pretty self-explanatory and you'll see where I'm at pretty soon. A little bit better shot of what's going on in there. You can see that yoke. I got that plastic cowling out of the way. And you can see it's not attached to uh, the up-down control. That's that thing like centered in the shot. And then this is the... Um, I gotta get, I've got to get that link ball connected to a rod or a linkage that's down, hidden down in here. Probably It's probably too glary to see it in this shot. But the hardest thing is going to be to get that reconnected you can just sort of see part of it there it's going to be to get that reconnected and hooked back up with a, a pin and everything so i'm going to do that off camera but uh, this is a much better shot than the previous one okay so now i tighten that back up this is a 14 millimeter um socket there to tighten that guy up you can see this yoke is kind of free now and so you can also see the way it works. Um, so this is where the joystick mounts to. That link ball thing is right there. That's the, the thing I just attached. Here's the one that goes into the front control or the up-down control, right? And then it just bolts in here. So my next task is to connect this thing up to the linkage that's down there. I know you can't see the linkage. It's kind of a bummer, but <laughs> this part's going to be probably the most tricky, dexterous part. You know, so I think what I'm going to do is I need to get something to put underneath the tractor because I'm going to drop everything a hundred times and I've got a gravel driveway so I don't want to lose these little parts and uh yeah I'll go to it and then I'll come back once it's all reassembled all right so this part was by far the trickiest part you know it, so you basically have to get a pin down into that uh mechanism and I used a just a, wire, a piece of wire I twisted into this kind of makeshift tool. So I lowered it down there, got it into the hole. At first I lined it up with an Allen wrench, something that I could easily manipulate. Then I used this tool to drop that pin down in there and push it in with a screwdriver. You know, So now it's in there pretty good. So the next really tricky part is going to be putting a pin, cotter pin in there. <laughs> you know, so here's, here's a cotter pin or whatever kind of pin this is called. I think it's a cotter pin. So that's gotta go in there, you know, and to pin that thing together. And then we'll be almost all the way home. So I'm gonna fiddle some more and I'll be back with the next part. Well, I was actually able to get that pin in there with just a pair of vice, vice grips. Pretty, if you had a pair with a much longer nose, you'd have a much better view of what was going on in there. But still, that was pretty easy. You know, it was really trying to find the right tool to do it. These would work, but I'd get something with a longer nose to do it, you know. So you can't really see in there too well what's going on probably with this phone, but it's a pretty tight space. Anyway, so the last step will be to put this back together and then put the joystick on. So I'll do that, and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so the moment of truth here. So... The symptom of this thing, that thing being broken was as this was just like completely loose and flopping around. So now obviously that's fixed. Um, you know, let's see, up works, down works, the drag works. Okay, so let's bring it back up. And so the curl, yay, and dump, yay. Okay, so it's fixed. Perfect. <laughs> all right, that wasn't too bad at all. The main thing, the hard thing was finding the part. And uh, once I did that, actually getting it shipped here was a little bit of a chore. I had a lot of a lot of problems from the suppliers. The first one I ordered was from THK directly, 
and it just never showed up. It's somewhere at the FedEx warehouse somewhere. And uh, so I ordered those parts again. They're pretty cheap, they're like six bucks or something. Anyway, I hope this helps some people out there. This was not that horrible to do. It probably took about an hour. Uh, the main thing that you'll have to deal with is improvising tools to fish down in there and down into that control area, yeah, which is kind of really restricted. But uh, it's not that bad. And probably compared to taking it into a Kubota dealer, you'll save yourself, what, maybe $1,000? So, yeah, if you have that problem, either either way, you know, this is likely to break. These uh, leak balls with break on that controller. Um, give that a shot and uh, save yourself some money. Thanks.